As the saying goes, history is often written by victors, but parts of history are written purely by what was left behind. May it be a small artifact or a tomb, everything has the chance to rewrite history. Essentially, we're often piecing together tiny fragments without a clear understanding of the larger puzzle's appearance. From the most mysterious pharaohs that ruled ancient Egypt to puzzling coffins, here are the 20 greatest archaeological discoveries ever. Number 20. Mystery of Pharaoh Akhenaten The ancient Egyptian civilization is among the most incredible in the history of mankind. Naturally, one of its rulers would be among the most intriguing figures that lived. Akhenaten, initially known as Amenhotep IV, reigned around 1353. Akhenaten is the father of the famous young pharaoh King Tutankhamun. One of the most intriguing things about Akhenaten is that there are not one, but three tombs linked to him. The first is Tomb WV25, discovered in 1817 by Giovanni Battista Belzoni. This tomb in the Valley of the Kings was initially thought to belong to a different period. Later, Otto Schaden's team suggested it might be Akhenaten's, dating it to his reign. Decades later, around 1888, the Amarna tomb was discovered in Akhenaten's capital, Amarna. This tomb, despite being badly damaged, contained artifacts and reliefs depicting Akhenaten his queen Nefertiti, and their daughters. Finally, in 1907, another tomb was discovered. The plethora of artifacts found, including items linked to Akhenaten's second wife, Kia, and his famous son Tutankhamun, suggested a royal connection. The most compelling find? A badly mummified skeleton, which, after much debate, many scholars agree could be Akhenaten himself. However, the mummy's identity is still in question. Now, what's more bizarre is that Akhenaten's reign was so controversial and non-traditional that after his death, his monuments were dismantled, his statues destroyed, and his name was almost erased from history. It was only in the late 19th century that the discovery of Amarna brought him back into historical consciousness. This pharaoh was a paradox, hailed as a revolutionary and an idealist, yet also labeled a heretic and possibly mad. And so, to this day, Anything related to this pharaoh is considered an important find. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Old Human-Like Footprints in Crete In the summer of 2002, researchers stumbled upon a bizarre feature on a rock near the village of Trikilos, ancient footprints that resembled a man's. This turned out to be among the greatest archaeological discoveries to this day. Archaeologists believe that the footprints date back to around 5.7 million years ago. The fact that it resembles our footprints suggests that there was a species that lived that long ago that's similar to man. But that's not all. Recently, researchers concluded that the footprints are far older, setting their date to about 6 million years ago. For reference, this footprint now predates the famous Lucy footprints found in Tanzania, which are only around 3.2 million years old. Now let's talk about the shape of these footprints. They have a configuration strikingly similar to modern human feet, with five toes lacking claws, a parallel big toe, and a discernible ball of the foot. This contrasts with non-human ape footprints, which resemble a human hand more, with a big toe sticking out sideways. The suggestion? These footprints might have been made by an early human ancestor, potentially belonging to the group known as Gracopithecus Freiburg, nicknamed El Greco. The implications of this finding are colossal. If these footprints belong to an early human ancestor, it challenges the long-held belief that our evolutionary story began solely in Africa. It suggests a more complex narrative where early human-like creatures might have been wandering the area that are now Europe. Number 18. The Chirping Pyramid Most people immediately imagine the ancient Egyptian civilization after hearing the word pyramid. However, there are actually quite a lot of these structures scattered all over the globe. One of the most special is arguably the Chirping Pyramid. Nestled in the lush landscapes of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula is the Kakulkan Pyramid, a part of the Chichen Itza archaeological site. This pyramid, constructed around 1100 AD, holds a fascinating auditory mystery. When someone claps their hands at the base of its steep staircases, a peculiar chirping sound echoes back reminiscent of the call of the sacred Quetzal bird, a figure revered in Maya culture. The distinctive design of the pyramid, characterized by four stairways, 
each consisting of 91 steps and totaling 365 steps, mirroring the days in the Mayan calendar, plays a crucial role in creating this chirping echo. The sound of clapping doesn't hit a solid wall, but instead interacts with the hundreds of small steps on the pyramid's facade. This interaction produces multiple echoes. The difference in distances traveled by these echoes from the lower steps results in them following each other closely, creating a high-pitched sound. However, the intervals between successive echoes returning from the higher steps are longer, thus lowering the pitch. To a listener at the base, this gradation in pitch mimics the chirp of a bird. To this day, however, it's still a mystery whether this feature is a coincidence or an intentional feature of the pyramid. Number 17. Spanish Hill If you're living near Pennsylvania, perhaps you're already familiar with this feature, Spanish Hill. As its name suggests, Spanish Hill is, well, a hill. However, it's an important geographical and historical site. Located near Sayre in Athens at the confluence of the Chimung and Susquehanna rivers, this site has been a point of interest for centuries. Geologically, Spanish Hill is a flat-topped glacial moraine rising above 230 feet above the nearby floodplain of the Chemung River. This distinctive landscape feature covers approximately 10 acres and stands out in the surrounding terrain. Its strategic location made it a significant site for the Seneca Indians and possibly one of the largest towns in the region. The hill's name and its history, however, are shrouded in mystery to this day. It was one of the first sites visited by Europeans in their exploration of Pennsylvania. An early account suggests that local Native Americans referred to the hill as Hispan or Espen. The source of the name, however, remains unknown. Early excavations and studies at Spanish Hill revealed various Native American artifacts, which means this site was historically significant. Yet, these artifacts seem to add fire to the debate surrounding this place. Number 16. Grolier Codex In 1965, a mysterious book was discovered in Mexico. This book had 11 damaged pages from what is presumed to be a 20-page book, along with five single pages. Although it looks like an ancient codex, its authenticity was initially doubted by many. After all, forging archaeological artifacts wasn't something uncommon at the time. Over time, however, various scientific tests and studies have been conducted to determine its authenticity. These tests include radiocarbon dating, which yielded dates consistent with the 11th or 12th century and the identification of key ingredients like Maya Blue and Palagorskite, which are consistent with the materials used by the Maya. And so today, the Grolier Codex is recognized as a book left behind by the great Maya. Its contents also befit the Maya civilization. Each page of this codex features a standing deity facing left, with a column of repeated day signs on the left-hand side of the page. The codex also records the synodic periods of Venus, which were important to the Maya for their ritual and calendar systems. Number 15. Piri Reis Map In 1929, the Tabkapi Palace in Istanbul was transformed into a museum. During this process, a bundle of overlooked material containing an unusual parchment map was discovered by a worker. The map was, later on, identified as the work of Piri Reis. Aside from its antiquity, this parchment gained significant attention as it was based on source maps from Christopher Columbus's voyage to the Americas, among other sources. However, there's something different about it, and so began a never-ending debate and mystery. Piri Reis, an Ottoman admiral and cartographer, created this map in 1513. It's particularly notable because it's one of the earliest surviving maps to show the Americas. That, and its bizarre depiction of what many interpret as Antarctica, Considering that Antarctica was not officially discovered until 1820, more than 300 years after the creation of the Piri Reis map, experts are quite befuddled. Thus, several conspiracies were born. Some believe that the map is evidence of an advanced ancient civilization with knowledge of geography that far exceeded what was known in the 16th century. Others believe the map might have been compiled from even earlier sources, possibly hinting at explorations of the region before its official discovery. Skeptics and many scholars, however, argue that the supposed depiction of Antarctica is either a misinterpretation or an accidental inclusion, perhaps a creative representation based on the incomplete geographical knowledge of the time. To this day, the truth behind this map is up for debate. Number 14. White Shaman Rock 
Nestled in the rugged terrain of southwest Texas lies the White Shaman Rock Shelter, a small yet significant site housing an ancient mural that has captivated researchers and sparked lively debates in the archaeological community. The mural, painted thousands of years ago, displays an intricate array of human and animal figures in various colors. Today, these images are generally believed to depict the spiritual journey of shamans in the ancient Americas. Dr. Carolyn Boyd, an archaeologist and artist, played a pivotal role in unlocking the secrets of the White Shaman mural. In the early 1990s, Boyd embarked on a journey to decode the mural's meaning. She enrolled in an anthropology program and started a comparative study of different rock shelters, including Rattlesnake Canyon and Panther Cave. Boyd's epiphany came when she noticed recurring patterns in these murals, such as winged human figures above wavy lines, suggesting shamans' travels between the earthly and spiritual realms. Her realization and analysis led to the colorful interpretation of these figures. History buffs, if you're on the lookout for a captivating read, delving into details about this archaeological feature could be a rewarding choice. Number 13. Runamo From the United States, let's head over to Europe and talk about Runamo, one of the most intriguing archaeological discoveries known to man, at least in my opinion. Located in Blekinge, Sweden, this cracked dolerite dike was, for centuries, believed to be a runic inscription. Its mysterious markings, spanning about 72 feet, have puzzled scholars and local legends for generations. The intrigue began in the 12th century, when the Danish chronicler Saxo Grammaticus mentioned Renamo. He described it as a cliff adorned with strange letters, a mystery even then, and the inscription was already too worn to be legible. Danish king Valdemar I sent experts to decipher the engravings, but they returned empty-handed, the writings blurred by time and the elements. Later, in the 19th century, the Renamo inscription became the center of a heated scholarly debate. In 1833, the Royal Danish Academy of Sciences sent an expedition to investigate these runes. This team included Finner Magnusson, a philologist, who, after initial difficulty, claimed to have deciphered the inscription as an ancient ode to King Hildekind and the Battle of Bervala. However, his interpretation was highly controversial and widely disputed. After that failed attempt, Swedish scientist Jons Jakob Berzelius undertook his own study and concluded that what people thought were runes were merely natural cracks in the rock formed by ancient volcanic activity. This geological perspective gained support and turned a scholarly opinion against interpreting the inscription as runes. However, many suggested these runes could change meaning over time, influenced by the weather, the time of day, or even the observer's state of consciousness. This perspective aligns with a broader understanding of runes in Norse mythology, where they're seen as a universal sacred code, a language used by nature itself. And so, to this day, we're left wondering what Runamo truly is. Number 12. Tartaria Tablets Here's another archaeological discovery in Europe, the Tartaria Tablets. Discovered in 1961 by Nicolae Vlasa at the Neolithic site in Romania, these tablets, just like Runamo, are often the subject of debate. You see, these tablets were initially believed to be that of the Vinca Turdus culture, which emerged around 2700 BCE. However, radiocarbon dating of associated finds pushed the date back to around 5500 BCE. This has significant implications as it suggests that these tablets could predate the oldest known writing systems in Europe, including the first Minoan writing and even the Sumerian civilization in Mesopotamia. This discovery has the potential to rewrite history. The tablets are small, about 2.5 inches across, and have inscriptions only on one side. However, not many are convinced that these tablets indeed contain writing. Some believe that these symbols don't represent anything. What's more, there's also an issue regarding the age of the tablets. While radiocarbon dating is generally reliable for determining the age of an object, it can occasionally be prone to errors. Before the tablets were examined, they were baked for preservation, and many believe that this step might have had the unintended effect of changing their age. Number 11. Sandia Cave Here's an archaeological site that some of you might have visited before, the Sandia Cave. Located in the Sandia Mountains near Albuquerque, New Mexico, this National Historic Landmark is not only significant for its archaeological importance, but also holds cultural significance for numerous Pueblo groups. In the 1930s, an archaeologist named Frank Hibben did some digging in the cave. 
He claimed to find evidence that ancient humans lived there way before we thought people were in North America. However, his findings were controversial. Some other scientists questioned if his discoveries were legitimate. However, despite the disputes surrounding Hibben's findings, the cave remains a point of interest. The cave ceilings are blackened from years of smoke from fires near the entrance, hinting at its use as a shelter. Unfortunately, this cave has been the subject of vandalism and graffiti. Efforts have been made to remove this graffiti and preserve the site's integrity. But if you're interested in visiting the Sandia Cave, proper hiking gear is advised due to the rough trail leading to the cave. The trail includes a steep climb and a metal circular stairway that leads to the cave entrance. The cave offers a view of the Las Huertas Canyon and is characterized by a cool breeze that suggests another entrance or connections to other caves within the mountain. Number 10. Baghdad Battery In 1936, in the vicinity of Baghdad, railroad workers unearthed what seemed to be a collection of unusual artifacts. These curious objects, dating back to around 200 BC during the Parthian Empire, were simple in construction. At first glance, they look like ordinary pots. However, they seem to have a small contraption with them. Each consisted of a 13-centimeter yellowish ceramic pot sealed with asphalt containing a copper cylinder and an iron rod. The setup was remarkably similar to a basic galvanic cell, suggesting that these pots could have been ancient batteries. But what exactly were these batteries used for? Well, some hypothesized that they were used for medicinal purposes, like acupuncture, known to ancient cultures. Others argue they might have been employed for electroplating, a process of coating objects with a thin layer of metal, an innovative technique if true for the time. Many have tried to test these theories. After the Second World War, Willard Gray demonstrated that a reconstruction of the Baghdad battery design could produce current when filled with grape juice. Further, in 1978, R. Negebrecht reportedly used a similar setup for electroplating gold onto a small statue. Although, frustratingly, no direct records of this experiment exist. To this day, whether the Baghdad battery is actually a battery remains a question. Number 9. The Paracas Candelabra The Paracas Candelabra, etched into the side of a hill in the Paracas Peninsula, Peru, is among the many mysterious geoglyphs on Earth. This piece measures a staggering 591 feet in height. It's so massive that it's visible from up to 12 miles at sea and can only be fully appreciated from above or from the ocean. This incredible figure was created by digging trenches about 60 centimeters deep and placing rocks around it to form a distinct shape. Experts believe that this site dates back to around 200 BCE. As its name implies, the Paracas Candelabra is often attributed to the enigmatic Paracas culture, known for their elongated skulls. However, some researchers believe it could be much older, possibly not even made by the Paracas people. Several theories have been proposed to explain the candelabra's significance. Some believe it represents a plant used by prehistoric inhabitants of the Paracas region. Others, however, argue that it might symbolize the lightning rod of Viracocha, the creator god in pre-Inca and Dinka mythology. Another interesting hypothesis links the candelabra to Hindu mythology, suggesting that it might have been described in the sacred text Ramayana. This theory proposes that the geoglyph was a navigational marker for ancient travelers, possibly even for mythical flying machines known as Vimanas. And yet, despite all these theories, the true meaning and purpose of the Paracas candelabra remain elusive. Number 8. The Copper Scroll Imagine stumbling upon an ancient scroll made not of parchment or papyrus, but of copper, listing an astounding array of treasures. That's precisely what happened in 1952 when archaeologists discovered the Copper Scroll in a cave near Qumran, alongside the Dead Sea Scrolls. Unlike its parchment counterparts, this metallic manuscript has been a subject of intrigue and debate among scholars and treasure hunters alike. The Copper Scroll stands out for its content. It's essentially a list of 64 locations of hidden treasures, largely composed of gold and silver. The quantities mentioned are staggering, possibly amounting to tons of precious metals. It reads like an adventurer's dream, a real-life treasure map, sparking numerous theories and expeditions to locate these riches. However, no one has successfully found any of the treasures mentioned in the scroll. What adds to the mystery is the language of the scroll. It's written in a form of Hebrew that shares similarities with Mishnaic Hebrew, but also includes unusual terms and expressions, 
suggesting it might have been written in a local dialect. This peculiarity has made transition and understanding challenging. Some speculate that the scroll might not be a literal guide to physical treasures, but a symbolic or metaphorical text. The dating of the Copper Scroll is another point of contention. While it's believed to have been created between the 1st and early 2nd century CE, the exact period and the circumstances under which it was written remain unclear. Was it a list of temple treasures hidden away during turbulent times, such as the Jewish revolt against the Romans, or something else entirely? Well, we're yet to know. Number 7. Buried Like Royalty About 34,000 years ago, a Stone Age society demonstrated remarkable care and respect for the burial of two young boys. The boys, approximately 10 and 12 years old, were buried in a long, slender grave filled with an astonishing array of riches. This included over 10,000 mammoth ivory beads, more than 20 armbands, around 300 pierced fox teeth, 16 ivory mammoth spears, and other valuable items. What's strange is that these two were found to be suffering from physical disabilities, and yet an adult male buried nearby, who likely had more opportunity to contribute to the group, was buried with fewer treasures. Archaeologists were surprised by the respectful treatment these children received despite their disabilities. In times of hardship, when daily survival posed challenges, there was a tendency to neglect those who couldn't fend for themselves. And yet, 34,000 years ago, when many perceived humans as barbaric and moral expectations were challenged by the instinct to survive, these two children were lovingly honored. Number 6. Pet Cemetery Now here's another unexpected burial. In Lima, Peru, the Parque de las Leyendas, an archaeological complex, revealed a heartwarming aspect of ancient society. Here, over 100 dog skeletons, thought to be about 1,000 years old, were discovered. These dogs were found buried alongside human remains, suggesting a deep bond between the canines and their masters. The burial practices reveal that, to the people of that era, these dogs were not merely considered pets or animals. Instead, they were companions, honored and respected in death, just as they were in life. Number 5. Atacama Skeleton In 2003, Archaeologists in the vast, arid expanse of the Atacama Desert in Chile discovered the most bizarre and curious-looking remains ever, the Atacama Skeleton. Also known as Atta, this skeleton measured about six inches long with a cone-shaped head and an unusual bone structure, including ten pairs of ribs instead of the usual twelve for humans. Naturally, the bizarre appearance of Atta garnered the attention not only of archaeologists, but also of conspiracy theorists. Many speculations arose from Atta's discovery, including theories of alien life forms due to its unusual physical characteristics. However, a recent analysis of Atta's DNA revealed it to be a human female with genetic mutations linked to bone disorders and dwarfism. The mutations could explain Atta's unique phenotype, including its small stature and irregular bone development. Researchers from institutions like the University of California, San Francisco and Stanford University conducted detailed studies to unravel Atta's genetic secrets. They found mutations in genes associated with bone diseases and growth disorders. The analysis suggested that Atta had a rare bone aging disorder in addition to other genetic abnormalities. In terms of its origin, the DNA analysis indicated that Atta was indigenous to the western region of South America, specifically the area around Chile. Contrary to earlier beliefs about age, the skeleton was estimated to be relatively recent, dating back around 40 years. However, many continue to believe that Atta is a real example of extraterrestrial activity on Earth. Number 4. Coffin Birth In the quaint medieval town of Imola, Italy, the discovery was made in 2010 that would perplex and intrigue archaeologists. During an excavation, the remains of a pregnant woman from around the 7th or 8th century were found. The unique and somewhat eerie aspect of this discovery was that it appeared to be a rare case of coffin birth, where the fetus is expelled from the deceased mother's body due to the buildup of gases from decomposition. The archaeological team found the woman, estimated to be between 25 and 35 years old at the time of her death, buried in a face-up position in a stone grave. Remarkably, the fetus, nearly full term at 38 weeks of gestation, was partially expelled from the mother's body. This led the researchers to conclude that this was a case of post-mortem fetal extrusion, or in simpler terms, expelling the fetus after death. 
Another curious feature of this tomb is a small hole drilled into the woman's skull. What exactly is this? Well, you see, there have been several periods in history where people used trepanation, a method that allegedly relieves illnesses by releasing the pressure in the skull. To do this, a small hole is drilled into the person's cranium. It definitely sounds macabre, doesn't it? Hooray for modern technology and the advancement of the medical field. But hey, at least people who underwent trepanation back then didn't need to worry about insurance or debt after a hospital visit. Number 3. Void in the Pyramid Now let's go back to the sands of Egypt once again. Constructed about 4,500 years ago during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, this architectural marvel held the record as the tallest man-made structure for over 3,800 years. Just as we start to unravel the methods behind the construction of the Egyptian pyramids, a new mystery emerges. A void within the Great Pyramid. The latest particle technology reveals a hidden corridor for the first time since the pyramid's construction. Discovered in 2016, this void, located near the pyramid's north face, is a corridor-like space about 30 feet long, 6.5 feet wide, and 6.5 feet tall. Located just above the Grand Gallery, a narrow corridor that leads to the king's chamber. This void is nearly 100 feet long. Researchers are planning to continue their explorations, possibly with the help of tiny robots. These robots might venture into areas of the pyramid that have been sealed off for millennia, revealing more secrets. Number 2. Skull 5 Our understanding of the evolution of mankind has significantly advanced over time. We have yet to fully grasp it, but with each new discovery, we unveil another hidden piece of how humanity came to be. Skull 5, also known as Dimonisi Skull, or simply D4500, is one of the many ancient skulls that provide insights into the evolution of humans. This skull was the first completely preserved adult hominin skull from the early Pleistocene, dating back to 1.8 million years ago. This skull was discovered in 2005. Despite its ancient age, Skull 5 has a lot in common with modern humans. For starters, it has a small brain case, about 546 cubic centimeters, roughly one-third the size of our brains today. You see, Skull 5 suggested that instead of a bunch of different early Homo species, we might just be looking at one species with a lot of diversity. This finding stirred up a bit of a scientific debate, with some researchers suggesting that Homo rutifensis and Homo habilis, previously thought to be separate species, might actually be part of the Homo erectus group. We remain uncertain about it, but the information provided by Skull 5 has given us ample insight into the evolution of humanity. And now it's time for today's topic. According to the Bible, the Earth is around 6,000 years old. But if you ask science, our planet is about 4.5 billion years old, perhaps even older. The universe? A staggering 13 billion years old or more. With that being said, there's still much we're unsure about. As I've said, each discovery adds to the puzzle, and as every piece gets added, the final picture can drastically change. This massive tree stump, believed to be the oldest ever on our planet, was found by loggers. Predictably, the local tribe around the area immediately forbade any experts to come. Archaeologists and historians were barred from studying these finds to prevent any rewriting of history. You see, it was said that these tree stumps contain inscriptions that might change the way we view not only religion, but life itself. It appears rather unclear and ambiguous, doesn't it? Is this merely a hoax intended to intrigue conspiracy theorists? Or does it signify something truly ominous? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 1. A Mysterious Priest In 1679, the prominent Lutheran bishop Petter Winstrup was buried in Lund Cathedral in Sweden, accompanied by a coffin containing a tiny bundle. Recent DNA analysis suggests that the bundle contained the remains of a fetus, likely Winstrup's unborn grandson. The fetus, a male delivered prematurely at five or six months gestation, was found in 2015 during an X-ray examination of the coffin. DNA analysis indicated a 25% genetic match, pointing to a grandparent-grandchild relationship. Born in 1605, Petter Winstrup played a pivotal role in religious leadership in Denmark and Sweden, contributing significantly to the establishment of Lund University in 1666. The well-preserved state of his body, discovered to be unembalmed but resting on a mattress filled with herbs and hops, provides a unique glimpse into the living conditions and health of people in 17th century Europe. 
In addition to the fetus, researchers also delved into Winstrup's medical history, studying a nodule on his lung, providing insights into a strain of tuberculosis he endured earlier in life. This research supported evidence of tuberculosis emerging during the Neolithic transition. The discovery of the fetus raises intriguing possibilities, with the researchers proposing that Winstrup's son, who did not follow in his father's footsteps, may have buried the last male heir as a symbolic act. The grandson was interred with Winstrup, potentially marking the end of a family tragedy as the Winstrup line faced challenges, losing estates and eventually dying without a son to carry on the family name. Quite the tragic death, don't you think? I'm definitely intrigued by Renoma and the Pet Cemetery in Lima. Now I know what to read about in my free time. But what about you guys? Are there any stories you've been interested in lately? Feel free to share them down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.